Happy New Year, everyone. 2019, and I'm back at Big Data underscore palsy. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel with five minutes to save you 50, episode 11, which means I have saved you tons of time if you followed all 10 episodes from last year. This is a special 2019 New Year kickoff episode, so we're going to go more than five minutes, but we're not only going to save you 50 minutes, at least a month. We're also gonna save you 500 megabytes at least every single month in your presentations. And here's why. I've been developing richer and richer multimedia and image content presentations because when I come on stage, even if I did a title like this, which I think looks pretty good, it's got some various fonts and that kind of stuff, I actually like to come on stage so it looks like that. You know, because everyone always says, oh, uh, we don't use PowerPoint anymore. I hear some IBMers saying that, it really bugs me. We don't use PowerPoint. It's not PowerPoint that sucks, it's probably the presenter. Like I've been bored to death by people who do whiteboards, by people who just talk in a podcast, and by people who do presentations. So I wanna bring more and more richer multimedia into my presentations. Here's a video behind the title slide. Or you know, I use a lot of full imagery and that kind of stuff. Now, that has a consequence. It has a consequence of creating rather large files. And so this presentation, and it's, you know, it's a 60 minute presentation, is 540 megs. And the reason why I wanna save you time and space today is I'm gonna to show you how to reduce this because it'll save you time when I'm uploading or sharing, but also when I'm you know, in presentation mode, the size of the presentation gets loaded into memory. So it's gonna help you navigate in presentation mode and more so the critical autosave feature, which I absolutely love and use all the time, it will help stuff save faster because the file's smaller. So there's a way to do it with the Microsoft way, then there's the Paul Z way. You should experiment with both. I think they're both valuable. We'll never work on our originals, so we'll go show you the Microsoft way first. So how would I do this? We'll just call this PPT Compress, and we'll go open the presentation. Now, PowerPoint has a built-in mechanism by which you can go and compress images. Not video, but images in your presentation. It works pretty good, I will be honest. I started looking for a new way, which is what the second part of this video is gonna be about, because I had this experience where sometimes it would crash, where sometimes it would corrupt some images. You'll know that because it comes with a white box and, an, and a red X in it. And I think they've been improving this over time, but yeah, I just kind of got bitten too many times and I also wanted to compress video. So as you know, when you double click on an image, you go into the picture format, you'll find this option in save, but there's something called compressed pictures. Open it up. Typically your presentation is set into here. I move to print. This is what I use for my keynotes, at least for now. I've never had a problem with resolution at 220 pixels per inch, or pickles per inch if you're hungry. Um, and I usually leave the cropped areas. You could get some more savings. I'm gonna do another video on the ever powerful crop tool. It's more than what you think in PowerPoint. And I like this because I can do all the pictures in the file, which is a benefit over the method I'm about to show you. So as I turn that on, it's gonna go and that's what it's compressing. So as I go and save it out, I want you to look at our, our uh, compress uh, file over here, which is 540. So now we'll go close this out, we'll save it. Now, this save's gonna take a little longer because it's actually saving out a new image for all of the images uh, in the 74 slide deck, right? So um, we'll just give it a couple more seconds here. This should change, there you go. It just saved us, I don't know, around 80 megs. I typically find using 220 PPI, I can get around 10 to 20% savings. Okay, now if you saw one of the other episodes, I showed you actually how to go into a PowerPoint and pull out videos or images that you like very quickly. And I showed you that with what I call the zip trick, converting this thing into a zip file. What? That's what you're saying right now if you missed the episode. Yeah, this is just a zip file at the end of the day. It's XML with lots of pointers. And so if you're using the same image all the time, the tricks that I'm showing you are really, really gonna help because you're pointing to those images. So I drive in here and I'll go into media and do I do a little sort. And here I can see what are the big kind of consumers in my presentation. One little side tip, tips. Try not to use them in your presentations, right? Because they take up a lot of space. They're usually very large, what I find. So this one here, oh, it's that Facebook image. Okay, so let's go get that one. So we'll move that over. I can see I actually have a large GIF here, or GIF uh, as well. 
I'll kind of show you that one too. This is a kind of fun little, that's an animated GIF I can tell by here. So I can't play with that one yet. Um, but as you go through here, you'll go and find the fine, the large ones that, that you want to find. As well, here's an image or a movie. And I look at the movie, it's 74 megs. Oh, that's my title page. Okay, that will be a good one to play around with. So let's go get this one too. Okay, so now I've pulled those out of the zip file. And now let's go and play around with their compression and see if we can get the size down here. We'll start with the image. So let me double click on this one. So this one here is like 28 megs. Your preview in Mac and your default uh, image viewer in Windows, they allow you to export to different formats. So I'm actually gonna go here. You don't even need to use a graphics tool. Here you can see that the TIFF is very large, but I could go and export that to like a PNG, for example, right? Or I could go and export that to a JPEG. So let's go make this the best JPEG we can find. We'll go put it in the same folder that we're working on here. If I can find it here, my talk. And we'll go save that down and then we'll close it out. So here you can see that I've gone from 27 to two megabytes. I always give it a little sanity check. I open it. Wow. That looks exactly the same, right? Now, what about this video? This video was 76 megs. There's a lot of compression uh, tools out there for video. One of my favorites is something called handbrake. So I'm going to use handbrake now. Now, if you remember, one of my other episodes, I told you this really neat trick on the Mac to drag the pass to where a file resides. Instead of me having to drill to the file, I've opened it here. I come over, I just grab the, right? If that doesn't save you an hour a week, I don't know what will. Um, so now I'm gonna open it and we'll go and save this. Uh, we'll go save it to my talk here. Actually, you could have dragged it there, but I'll show you the way that other people do it. Okay. So here we go, and we'll just go compress this with a codec. So that's gonna go through and compress. It should go pretty quick, and we're gonna see if we can get some savings in there as well. And now we're about halfway done. Now, if you remember on the video, right, um, you've gotta, it might change format here. Like I'm gonna change format to AVI here, um, as opposed to the .mov file. And I just, or MP4, I mean, I just find I get some better results that way, but you can keep it the same. Now, why would I keep it the same? You notice that I went to a TIFF image, right? So this is gonna be the same, but if this was a large GIF file and maybe I, re or a JPEG and I reduced the resolution, right? That would be interesting because I could just drag and drop the image of the same name back into the zip file, save the zip file, right? And then rename it back to PPTX and I would be fine because all the pointers will work. I'm doing a little more sophisticated one here that doesn't work as smoothly on purpose because I'm just trying to show you uh, the way that you can do things. Okay, so here we are, and now we're gonna go back in here. We're gonna rename this here, and if I did a kind of further in depth, like I said earlier, I could have just dragged and dropped it if it had the exact same name, but I use different formats. So I'm gonna go back to PPT, we're gonna go open this up. And now we'll open it up. Again, it's 540 megs. Let's go and replace this one first, right? And all we gotta do here is, uh, no, we don't want that one. We wanna go grab this one. We'll take it and then we'll send it to the back. And now I want you to pay attention to the size of our presentation on copy, it's 540. We'll go save this out. So it's saving right now that one image and it just dropped to 513 megabytes. Okay, so now how do we go and get this image out or this video out? So you can see it's video, I highlight it, I press play, okay. So what I'm gonna do is go do the exact same thing. I'm gonna grab the video. I'm gonna bring it over here. Now, if you notice, it's got a kind of different uh, background here. So what I like to do, and this is another tool I showed you about, the format painter. I'll just hit it there. So that I grabbed the format. That's a little trick for you, not just to erase the one and to drop it in. And that might be the one reason why if you do a lot of customized formatting, you don't just replace the files on videos, right? Or images. So if it's, uh, you know, what's the rule of thumb? If it's an image, you can keep the file, the name, and you've done no customization to it, just drag it into the zip file. Otherwise you'll want to do it this way. So I'll erase that here, put this, send it to the back. Okay, now we're all set. Now we're gonna look at 513 megabytes. We're gonna go here and we're gonna save this out. Now it just dropped to 455 megabytes. So I only did two things in that entire video 
or in that entire presentation, I was able to get better than what I did with the Microsoft uh, method, uh, which again has some benefits. You can do them all at once. But if, especially if you're reusing a lot of stuff, if you go through all these images, right? I use them from time to time in different presentations. So now I'll just go start up the presentation again. And wow, that looks exactly the same, doesn't it, right? And that image looks exactly the same. So there you go, five minutes to save you lots of time in terms of booting up your presentation, auto saves, and also save some space. So tune into the next episode, and I hope you enjoy saving time. <laughs>